Karaguni. Welcome to the east coast of Kenya. Welcome to the Araboko Sokoke Forest. There are not only elephants to see here, but also many other animals and plants which can only be seen here. The forest is the last stronghold for many plants and creatures. You could say that the Araboko Sokoke Forest is a biological treasure trove even though it's only 40 kilometers long and 30 kilometers wide. The Araboko Sokoki, not far from the holiday places Watamu and Malindi, is one of the last remaining coastal dry forests left in East Africa. In the middle, you can come across the ruins of a town dating back to the Middle Ages, which has long since been abandoned by human beings. It was founded by the descendants of Arab traders and African coastal people known as the Swahili. Even today, the impressive ruins of Gede bear witness to the advanced culture back in the past. Then there are the trumpeter hornbills. The massive beak the bird has is not only a useful tool, but can also be used to impress others. This is not a fight, but rather their courtship behavior. You can also find a living fossil in the bushes, the tree fern. There are two rainy seasons each year, and this helps the growth of wonderful mushrooms on the forest floor. Once the sun over the equator has cleared the moisture in the air, you can witness an amazing sight. Thousands of butterflies are down on the ground. In earlier years, the butterflies were caught in huge numbers and sold as souvenirs. This is no longer allowed today. Souvenir butterflies are still available these days, but these are reared in a sustainable way by local butterfly farms, so as not to diminish the natural stocks in the forest. The chameleon is also one of many other fascinating creatures to be found in the Arabuko Sokoke forest. The strange movement it makes is a trick to help catch food. And the trick works. The chameleon is able to creep up on its prey and catch it with its long, fast tongue. The western region, where the forest is dense, is also the home of the Sokoke Scops Owl. It's possible to sometimes catch a glance of this relatively small, rare creature and watch it for a while. A gold-rumped elephant shrew marking out its territory. It's one of the rarest mammals in Africa. It only lives in the few remaining dry coastal forests in East Africa. The trunk-like nose is used for both smelling and turning over leaves and earth to find the insects it needs. There's no other area in the world where you can observe this creature better than the Araboko Sokoka forest. The nose, which is developed into a sensitive and highly movable organ, is something that we're familiar with in elephants. And this is where the name comes from. But the two creatures are in no way related taxonomically. Then we have the golden fur with which you can recognize the fully grown adult animal, which is perfect camouflage in the leaf mold on the forest floor. Moving on in the undergrowth, we come across the grey dica, which is a forest antelope. With a little luck, a visitor gets to see one directly on a forest path during a guided tour. The Araboko Sokoke forest is situated in a dry climatic zone. But when it does rain, pools of water are quickly created in the forest. They are a great environment for aquatic birds. Here we see an African jacana attempting a wonderful balancing act. Its passage over the loosely floating leaves is only made possible by extra long toes on its feet. This one is an African pygmy goose during a courtship display. And 
here we see the African fish eagle out hunting. The Araboko Sokoke Forest was declared a protected area as early as 1943 for the wealth of trees, wildlife and plants to be found nowhere else in the world. The sheer extent of biological diversity of the Araboko Sokoke Forest is a main tourist attraction and thus presents a useful situation for the people residing close by. Some of the locals know exactly where you can find certain plants and creatures. They earn their livings as tourist guides. Okay, you can also just a nest of bees uh, at the side of the path. Uh, nest of the, breeding, uh, the forest guides take tourists and show them around without destroying plants and animals. They have a keen interest in preserving forest because it's the source of their income and guarantees the existence of their families. Experience the world of nature without harming it is the basic idea behind ecotourism. Two tree houses have been erected in the interest of observing the forest without damaging it. It's a great place to watch the animals from. International nature conservation organizations, together with the local nature Kenya body, make sure that poaching doesn't gain the upper hand in the forest area. Mike has discovered a number of traps. Willy Kombe, a forest guide, shows how they work. And then it gets uh, caught. Every year about 15,000 animals are caught in this forest, so that's everything from small antelopes, elephant shrews, bush bucks, basically almost every mammal that's living in this forest. Mostly the local population is hunting in the forest, so that's people from villages directly surrounding the forest, and that's mostly for subsistence purposes. So usually they use the meat from the animals, and sometimes they sell it, but mostly they use it for themselves. What used to be traditional hunting methods are now illegal poaching. In the northwest. Okay. This area. This place, eh? Yes. The sergeant, go out and plan for that patrol immediately because we don't want that thing to continue. In order to stop this, Nature Kenya is working with Kenya Wildlife Service. Nature Conservation has to offer something. Clean drinking water is a good example of how nature conservation means advances. In the past, the women had to walk a number of kilometers into the depths of the forest. Here they were in direct competition with elephants and buffalo. That was dangerous, and the water was often extremely contaminated. The Nature Conservation Organization, Nature Kenya, got together with villagers to build water kiosks on the edges of the forest. Clean, healthy water for people living on the western fringes of the forest, a project that has brought benefit to people and the world of nature. Cutting down trees and slash and burn methods are the reason why the Arabuko Sokoke forest has shrunk to its present size today. Local people have been getting ecosystem services like water, wood and meat out of the forest for generations. Without being aware of the fact, they've been undermining their own living conditions. Illegal wood procurement is something the rangers are battling. But the problem can't be solved with bans and fines. Nature Kenya, together with international conservation organizations, are now concentrating on environment education. School teachers explain to the children how the forest can be utilized and protected in a sustainable way as well. In order to understand this, you have first got to know how a forest ecosystem works. Once the tree has been felled, it's gone forever. Play how to learn about nature. That's environmental education. A forest is a place where we have got trees. One, we have got trees. This is the reason why environment education in the schools in the Arabuko Sokoka forest has become a normal subject, like maths and reading and writing. The children tell their parents what the forest can provide for them. The school children learn what sustainable use means so that something remains in the world of tomorrow of the wealth of nature that they describe so vividly in their songs.
Maida Creek lies on the coast, surrounded by mangroves, a tropical stretch of shallow water between the sea and the coast. During bird migration, thousands of aquatic birds are attracted by the mussels and crabs in the sand flats. Mangroves are the plants which grow in the stretches of brackish water between the rivers and the sea. This is a wimbrel, a guest from the Arabian Peninsula, which is gathering its strength for the annual migration. People too use the shallow water areas to hunt for crabs, fish, mussels, and other protein-rich edibles. This fiddler crab, which can be found all over the place, is not considered to be a delicacy for mankind. But the crab plover sees it completely differently. The tourists who don't profess to be bird experts find this bird to be extremely interesting, the African fish eagle. Mankind and nature coexist here in Maida Creek without any problems. Human beings and nature living side by side for thousands of years without destroying it. A wonderful example of how to coexist. And that is what ecological tourism wants to achieve. The countryside, the people, and the beauties of nature existing without anything being destroyed or overexploited. Karabuni, Kenya. Welcome to the Araboka Sokoka Forest and Maida Creek. Allow yourself to be overwhelmed by the treasures of nature. Ask at your hotel reception for details about excursions with the official guides. Have fun observing nature and what it has to offer. <laughs>